Welcome. Welcome back. You're watching Roundtable and we are to speaking to Dr. Karvan Ratnatunga. He's also the chairman of the International Year of Astronomy 2009 and he's the president of the Sri Lanka Astronomical Association. So we were also elaborating on his experience at NASA, especially with the Hubble's telescope and the discoveries he had done. Then we went on to the definition, a classical definition of the Sri Lankan New Year and as to why the Sri Lankan New Year was set on now is on the th uh, April 13th. And he also said that 60, 70 years ago, it was on the 12th of April, he actually went on to talk about from the time of Robert Knox, that is 1681, when he said that Sri Lankan New Year was celebrated on the 27th of March. Why is it now shifted to April 13th? So there was a very interesting analysis based on an astronomical framework. And then now we are elaborating on the fact as to why, whether the other planets will not have any impact on the human beings on the planet and whether it will not have any other implication of this Sri Lankan New Year for this uh, doctor is selling that there's nothing beyond that definition. Right. So astrology, when you take of astrology and the classical astrology that is practiced by everybody, they believe that at the time of birth that the positions of the planets affect your personality and everything else. Now, unfortunately, if you take the, the physics of it and you analyze the forces, uh, gravitational forces and whatever, the forces that happen from the uh, doctor's presence or the furniture in the room is very much higher than what uh, effect you'd have from the Jupiter or uh, moon or sun or anything uh, because the, gravitation, uh, the objects are cl much closer to you. So there is no uh, astronomy, uh, physical basis that the positions of the planets would have. There is also, if you take it on a more uh, theoretical basis, if you think, most science knows that the, the physics that we have this governs us here, governs the rest of the universe. There is no different physics which governs us different places. So let's say, for example, that there was this unknown physics or the unknown science which governs astrology then there is one assumption of science is that it should be the same at all positions in the universe. Now, if you, go, if you know that in some time in the future, there could be people who would be born on the moon. We have gone to the moon and we have walked on the moon and we could be, there could be mothers who could get, deliver babies on the moon. But they could not be given an astrological horoscope because the moon is then not a planet like we couldn't put on the thing and the earth would be there much more larger and the earth is not considered a planet in the horoscope. So if they were born on Mars they would have different problems because the, so that way what we know is that astrology is not a space time invariant. It, can, it will change. It cannot be the same as what we have astrology here. So in a way it is scientifically illogical as well as scientifically not correct to have astrology to work. So I, in my opinion there is no reality but on the other hand if you believe in astrology it will definitely affect you because as anything if you believe in God or if you believe in whatever uh, you would be influenced by that belief which could give you confidence to do things and it could on the other hand could give you uh, not lack of confidence to do things, which is the dangerous part. And if it always gives you confidence, then like the Buddhist meditation, it is you can always consider it something positive. Unfortunately, astrology has the negative point of saying, you know, so and so has a bad horoscope, so therefore he's bad for his parents, and therefore he should be sent off to the temple because he's Hatra Kendra Palu or something, or so and so should not get married because that person has a bad horoscope and I right. think that should be against human rights. <laughs> Okay, doctor. So, doctor, uh, what you are presenting is actually maybe on a more scientific framework, a controversial proposition. But uh, I don't know whether there are other scientists who will also pr prove it other uh, otherwise. So, I guess it's a different topic and a conversation by itself, as I told the other yeah, time. So, also moving on, right. uh, uh, again, something I would want to ask you is now that you have also explored these uh, options with the telescopes mm -hmm. and all that, when you study the universe universe, what are the implications that y we as um, on the earth can take, like for example in the context of global warming? Okay, now global warming is a very interesting topic. I mean, 
uh, lot of uh, science has been, uh, recently, there's a lot of debate whether the global warming is caused by human activity, which has increased the carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere, and therefore we are warming up, or whether it's a natural phenomenon. Now, Al Gore, in his film Inconvenient Truth, basically tried to portray the picture that it was all man-made and that 100% of what it was was a human effect. Man-made in the sense in terms of carbon emissions? Yeah, carbon emissions and the cause of the global warming. But if you carefully look at the signature and try to do modeling to see what proportion of it could be there. Now, we know that there is a natural effects in the, on the Earth over a period of 100,000 years or so. The Earth cools and warms. There was an ice age, for example, uh, which ended just 14,000 years ago. The whole of the northern hemisphere was covered with ice for about 10 or 20,000 years. And that ended about 14,000 years ago. And it, the Earth gradually has been warming up since that time. And when the, for example, not many people know this, that when from 14,000 to 7,000 years, the Earth warmed up so gradually. And in the process, all the ice in the northern hemisphere, which was locked up in that, uh, melted. And the sea level rose by 120 meters. Now, that is a lot. And uh, so if the, at that time, when the, the sea level was 120 meters below what it is now, we would have been a part of South India. There would have, we would have been one solid landmass. And we know that 17,000 years ago in Sri Lanka, there were agricultural people in Horton Plains living here and sort of growing agriculture. So that was a time when we were a part of South India. And then over a period of 7,000 years from 14,000 BC, uh, 14,000 years before now to 7,000 years be, and before now, which is about 5,000 BC, the sea level rose. And after that, it has been fairly steady. Now there is a question as to whether global warming would create melt the Antarctic and may melt Iceland. Now, if Iceland was to melt, then the sea level will rise by about seven meters. If the Antarctic, which has about two kilometers or two miles of ice on it to melt, it will raise the sea level by another 73 meters. So a total of 80 meters if all of the uh, Greenland and the northern hemisphere ice and the southern Antarctic ice was to melt. So that was very dangerous because if the earth was to, uh, the sea level was to go 80 meters up, you know, the Colombo would be completely underwater and we would be a much smaller island than what it is. Uh, but it's one thing is we know that it will, might happen if we really have global land. That's why we do need to stop it and we stop uh, this sort of uh, the earth uh, melt uh, raising by more than about four degrees centigrade because we know that the permanent ice shelf in Antarctica started after the earth was cooled down beyond four degrees from what it is now. So if it goes back up four degrees from what it is, the ice shelf will go. But one thing to remember, it's not going to go overnight. Right. Not like 20, the movie 2012 where you will wake up one yeah, morning. Yeah, that is exactly what I wanted to ask you. Are we heading to 2012? Because yes. now, the speculations that there can be end of the planet Earth uh, or end there's of the all Mayan those speculations calendar. So and the, the original speculation was because the Mayan calendar exactly. ended in 2012 and they sort of all said, okay, it, it, just, it's, it didn't end in 2012, it started a new cycle in 2012. I mean, you can't, I mean, all these calendars, you have a certain number, number of cycles and then you have to start a new cycle. So 2012 happened to be the end of their cycle. So, it's so another star a cycle another starts, star, like how the new, uh, how and another new, new year, year starts. Like the new year and it's or a, a longer period. Right. right? So, um, if you take the Indian mythology, there is the Kali Yuga, the uh, various Yugas, which you know, last for 100,000 years and various other periods. So this is the Mayan way where they would st start their new cycle in 2012. Because of that, they felt. But the movie, which was uh, film, uh, screened in Colombo a few months ago, that tried to portray the fact that, you know, we, because of global warming, they clinked up the two stories and they sort of said that uh, all the ice will melt overnight. Now, you have to remember, as I said, the ice took 